it's always somebody like, oh, he used to be in my DMs. Oh, he used to, he used to, he used to, he used to. Like, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm looking real rough right now, but um, I want to do, hold up, yes. my lips looking a little dry. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So. I want to do like a little get ready with me because I'm sick of looking like this, y'all. Like I have bags and everything. I'm sick of looking like this. I want to do like a get ready with me girl talk. And I actually wrote my notes today. So hopefully I won't be like all over the place because y'all know I be rapping. But first, I'm going to let in some natural light because I like doing my makeup with natural light. But ladies, let's talk. Let's talk. So, what's my first topic? My first topic is relationships and um, social media. Okay? So, and I'm going to be looking this way a lot because my mirror is, like, directly in front of me. Relationships and social media. So, I, I've never been the type to really post who I'm messing with unless, like... You know, I post them every once in a while because I just don't like people in my business. Like, I'm a really, really private person. And that's why YouTube is such a big step for me because I feel like, you know, I want to share more with y'all. But I'm never going to be that person that shares it all. You know, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I want to keep it 100% with y'all. But it's just some stuff is just, you know, needs to be left off social media. And I feel like our generation really forgot that some stuff needs to be uh, left on social media. But in my relationships in the past, I was getting posted and getting embarrassed. Like, I'll, if you're going to be embarrassing me out here and I don't know nothing about it, at this point, you got hoes laughing at me. Like, it's a face to it at this point. Like, do not post me. Don't post me. So, uh, my boyfriend now, like, I don't mind if he posts me and I'll post him, but it's not given, you know... I'm posting us all the time. People are in our business. Like, I like the way it is. Nobody in my business. And I, I don't know. Just social media is just very, very, like, messy to me. Like, every time you post to a dude, it's always that. Y'all, and I'm pretty sure y'all can relate to this. It's always somebody like, oh, he used to be in my DMs. Oh, he used to, he used to, he used to, he used to. Like, okay, sis. And why you ain't DMing back? Like, you know, it's always a story behind, you know, what somebody was doing in their past or whatever. Like, I feel like I focus on the now. If I'm with somebody now, they're treating me right now. You know, y'all girls, y'all be like, oh, let me come, let, you know, like, I'm, come, I'm coming to you as a woman, blah, blah, blah. But like, it really don't. Sometimes it do not be about girl code. Y'all coming to a woman be pure shade, pure, like, embarrassing her like it don't be let me come to you as a woman why is this side of my face looking this dry over here like i it just i don't know y'all intentions just be weird to me i don't want to see the next the next you know female getting embarrassed so if i do peep something like i I don't want to be the one to run back and be like oh yeah your dude doing this blah 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 but at the same time like like, I don't make it my business to tell her, but if I know her and I got a mutual respect for her, I'm not about to have her looking stupid. Like, if I see any of my friends, dudes, doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something one time. Anything you do after that is up to you and I don't judge. So, I feel like all y'all that be knowing y'all friend dudes be doing wild stuff or DMing you and you don't say nothing like you're wild I really be rapping and then I forget like y'all know this I don't brush my eyebrow hairs up a thousand times I just need to start doing my eyebrows right so I'm gonna start doing my eyebrows but um my next topic is letting go of hurt so I feel like this topic is kind of uh, it's a difficult topic to talk about because Everybody deals with hurt differently. And then it depends on the kind of hurt. Like, um, the, the, the hurt that I'm going to focus on today is heartbreak. Because 
and I, I don't just mean like in a relationship. I mean platonic uh, friendships, like girls, guys, because y'all know like sometimes losing a friend, most times losing a friend hurts more than, uh, you know, a breakup with a girlfriend or a boyfriend. The best way to, I guess, let go of her is to first deal with that emotion. You have to go through that emotion. It, it sucks. It hurts. And at the end of the day, sometimes the best of us get played. Okay. But you can't walk around acting like, you know, oh, I'm going to have my whole face too. Da, 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 da. Like, because then it just gonna, it's just it's going to be a cycle of hurting, hurt people, hurting others. That what, what I did was basically I blocked my ex on everything until I was healed. Like, I, I just really felt like, you know, we can't never be friends and you hurt me so bad. It's a part of your story, y'all. Like, of course it sucks that that person did you dirty, but you have to forgive them even when they're not sorry. I blocked him on everything and, um, you know, I just really took that time to not talk to anybody, really focus on myself, get back to, you know, just... uh happiness because I was so sad and I had to instead of ignoring that emotion I had to really address that emotion feel like go through that pain feel that pain and as sad as it as sad as it is to say that's the best way to let go of hurt by not being in denial that you are hurt like I know we don't we usually don't want to admit that like oh yeah like I got played or I got finessed or whatever but at the end of the day y'all it's life it is life <laughs> if y'all going through something you know maybe if you come across this message it's even a sign to just deal with that pain sit with that pain because that's the only thing that's going to get you through it. Even if you try to ignore that pain, you're you're going to be reliving it every chance you don't want to. Because it's going to be, say if you jump right into another relationship with that same baggage and that same pain. You're going to be dealing with those same insecurities, that same anger that the next person may not even deserve. Like you can't even fully give them a clean slate. But um. Oh, my next topic kind of goes into uh, the, the other topic I was talking about, letting uh, hurt go. My next topic is loving yourself. So basically, I feel like when you do let, let that hurt go, y'all, that's a part of loving yourself. When you stop messing with someone who constantly disrespects you and your standards and what you stand for, that is a big part of loving yourself. Some of the situations that we find ourselves in if we respected ourselves enough, we wouldn't even, you know, end up in some of those positions, especially time and time again. Like if you find yourself constantly in the same position, different nigga, same situation. I'm not ladies. I'm not saying blame yourself for these niggas behaviors, but I am saying reflect on, you know, what you allow and how you allow people to treat you. If it's a constant pattern, it is you. It's these niggas too, but it is you. You can't expect somebody to, you know, respect you if you're not respecting yourself. I'm not saying be bitter. And the biggest part about relationships is forgiveness. So I'm not saying there's no room for error because y'all gonna make it, especially the longer y'all together, y'all both gonna make mistakes. I'm not talking about cheating, okay? Cheating is not a mistake to me. I do not consider cheating a mistake. So I'm, I'm not considering that a part of the ups and downs, but you know, allow for mistakes, but know that you're not, you're not gonna settle for someone who only wants to Netflix and chill and that's, that's y'all first link up. I'm not saying that, you know, every date has to be about money. And I think a lot of guys get confused when girls say like, you know, take me out, show me a good time. No, it's called courting. People don't know how to court anymore. So if you know my my last relationship or situationship was always filled with a uh, come spark and come over. If you know you're not settling for that anymore, don't even start off a situation with that. 
that's what I mean by like, you know, loving yourself and respecting yourself. So if he see you, you okay with just, you know, the bare minimum. And then you're asking for the bare minimum shit you shouldn't even have to ask for. He's going to be complacent. He's going to be comfortable with giving you the bare minimum. Like, ladies, we got to make these niggas work. I'm not saying they got to bend over backwards and, you know, kiss the ground we walk on. But no, like, no more. It's, it's one thing to hold somebody down and to be understanding and all that. But, you know, they just got to they just got to provide more because it's no way, you know, we should be acting like, wives girlfriends wives and even moms sometimes to somebody who does nothing but like if I, my thing is if they don't add any value to your life and i don't mean financially financially that's a plus but i mean all he do is stress you out all he do is make you cry all he do is make you lose weight really think back and say what is he adding nothing Oh, my next topic is birth control. I actually have a lot to say about this, so I'm gonna blend these brows out and then I'll be right back. Okay, birth control. So, I have a love-hate relationship with birth control. Um, I feel like birth control, it depends on your, your body and how your body reacts to it. So, I got on birth control my freshman year of college because I wanted to gain weight. I probably, that was probably the worst decision I ever made. You know, I heard all throughout high school that Depo made people gain weight, especially like in areas that they wanted. But I also heard that it blew them up. But mind y'all, I was 98 pounds when I got to college. So I didn't care if it blew me up. I didn't, not like big as a house, but I, I just needed some, I, I felt like, you know, I wanted some meat on my bones. I was just tired of being so so bony like i had like a little boy chest it just wasn't given so i um i was 98 pounds and then i got on depo that was the first form of birth control that i got on so i got on depo and it was a nightmare like <laughs> it was nothing short of a nightmare i'm not even about to lie to y'all so my doctor told me to give it at least, you know, three months to really start not doing what it's supposed to do as far as controlling birth, but to really start uh, making changes to my body. And I had read up on it a lot. And um, I read that, you know, you didn't get your period after your body is used to uh, taking it. So I got my first shot and for Depo, you get a shot every three months, right? I got my first shot and I had my period for a, for three months straight. But it wasn't a full period. It was like spotting, but still, that was annoying. Then on top of that, y'all, I dropped down to 91 pounds. And I'm thinking, you know, oh my gosh, like, am I stressing, blah, 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 like, I didn't like the cafeteria food, so I really thought it was that, but like, I had never... My whole, in, in high school, I had never dropped below 95. So I was like really concerned, like, okay, what am I doing wrong? So then my iron was really low from, you know, being on my cycle for three months. So I got off of that immediately. It just was not my friend. Uh, then I tried to get on the pill like a year later. So my sophomore year, I got on the pill. That one was the best one for me. Like my, 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 um, what's it called? Ooh. My appetite, my appetite got so much better. I was, my, my weight that I gained was actually sticking. Like I got up to 115 pounds within maybe six months and that may seem like a really long time but that was like a big step for me and it was 115 pounds and it stuck like i was 115 for a good year then my uh skin was clear my hair was growing everything was cool then fast forward about a year later 
um i'm about what like 1 120 by this time so i was really happy about that then i started losing weight a little bit and i was concerned again but honestly i think i was just like stressed over school i don't think that had anything to do about weight i mean uh birth control I started to lose weight a little bit. I dropped back down to 115. Then I started working out more and I got to 125. I was 125 for the rest of my junior year. And then my senior year, I got up to 130. And then the first semester of my senior year, I got off of um, the pill. And the pill that I was on was the combination pill. And I just, uh, at the time, like I did a, a whole bunch of research and I seen that that was the best one. And, um, but I also seen when people get off of it, like they experienced hair loss and really bad depression. I experienced depression while I was on the pill. Like, I mean, well, it was never clinically, you know, diagnosed as depression. So I'm actually not going to even claim that, but I'm sorry. y'all. It's just, I feel like this is full coverage. It's pretty good, but I put a little on at a time and then. I just keep adding more because I don't want to ever look, you know, too. I would rather start off with a little and keep adding rather than start off with way too much because that's going to piss me off. But yeah, I, um, I was sad like all the time my senior year of college and I noticed immediately with like within the next month of getting off of the pill because you know you get your period the whole time when you're on the combination pill which i actually like when i was on the uh when, when i was on depot and i didn't see my period uh after like the three months and then i didn't see my period for a while i was so concerned because i'm like i like this but i literally get every other symptom i never really got cramps but i was like you know i still get irritable i still get all the other symptoms that comes with it i just don't feel you know how like your period is cleansing your body i just didn't feel like my body was doing what it was supposed to do while i was not getting my period on depo so um the pill just worked out better for me because i seen my period every month so i just felt like i don't know i just felt like a woman i felt like you know I felt regular. I felt like my body was doing what it was supposed to do. Um, I I got off of it though because I just couldn't take how moody I was. That I wouldn't even say that's the worst birth control. Like if 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 I was to recommend that uh, a birth control to someone, I would say Jonal Fay Twenty Eight. That's the pill that I was on. The combination pill that I was on, and it helped my weight stick. Like if y'all struggling to gain weight that pill the pill alone doesn't make you gain weight it increases your appetite but it helps the weight to stick so i loved it up until i didn't love it but i um yeah so i got off that and i noticed within a month of getting off of it i felt it's like i can't even the best way i can explain it to y'all is a weight lift it off of my shoulder i just don't recommend it i really don't recommend it because it's just not good for your body at the end of the day and i know there are females who depend on it you know to make their that i did that too dark to make their um cycles easier each month so you know i do get it but it wasn't for me so my next topic is friendships um, I feel like a lot of y'all don't know how to be friends. And like, that's why I really be good off having a, a big friend group or being really clicky. Like I'm the type of person I can get along with anybody, but I don't like messy people. I really keep my distance from messy people. And don't get me wrong, I love, I love, I'm not that girl that say like, Oh, I can't hang with females because females are too messy, blah, blah, blah. Like, all I hang with is niggas, blah, blah, blah. Like, I do have a lot of guy friends, but I wouldn't say my reason behind it is because I can't. Like, I literally don't trust females who say I don't hang with other females. I don't trust you. Because, baby, you might be the problem, honestly. Like, if 
if you can't keep one friend, and I know people who, you know, since kindergarten, who cannot keep one friend. If everybody is saying the same thing about you, you are the problem. And I feel like a lot of times females don't notice that they y'all like y'all don't know how to be friends. You talk about somebody and then when you get talk when you get caught talking about them, like you can't be a woman. Like, first of all, females don't know how to apologize. Like my friends that I have now, if we fall out and it's on me and I know that I'm wrong. I'm going to put my pride aside and I'm going to apologize because I value that friendship. A lot of females don't like doing that. And y'all, we really, we really have to do better because I just don't see how people just, you know, let friendships come and go and just really act like they're unbothered by it. Like, no, of course we don't need, no, we came in this, we came in this world alone. So no, we don't need anybody, but you mean to tell me? You fell off with all of your day ones because of your pride. You can't say when you're wrong. You can't say, you know, when you did something shady. I don't like that. And I don't want you around me. Honestly, I don't. I've always been the type that can hang with multiple crowds because I don't get caught up in the drama. People who are clicky and cannot hang with multiple people or cannot be with multiple crowds, those are the people who somewhat feel guilty for going to another crowd because they know that they were talking shit about them. You can't go over there because all y'all do is talk about them. I'm gonna protect my friends. I'm gonna let my friends who are mutual friends of my other friends and don't, uh, or who were mutual friends of my other friends, if they don't care for them at the time, don't talk, to, don't talk about them around me. Because I don't like people who, when you fall off, now you got all this to say about them. Because if they, if, if they were that person that you're saying that they are, or they are that person that you're saying that they are, that was that person when you was friends with them too. So shut up. Now all of a sudden you got all the tea, you airing their business. That just make me look at you sideways because damn bitch, if me and you fall out, you gonna be telling my business. That's how I look at it. And then those be the same people who have all the nerve, right? All the nerve to want people to do act a certain way for them or be a certain type of you you're the type of friend that you preach that you want you're not even the that friend to your friends you're not so how can you expect that in return how so yeah i've had friends that you know i had to not even cut off because i feel like we're grown it's not given that like you don't deserve that energy but I've had friends that, dang it, I keep messing up. I've had friends that I had to distance myself from just because I noticed their vibe. And just because, you know, our paths weren't, we didn't have the same, we weren't on the same path anymore. Just because, you know, you fall out with somebody or y'all inches don't really, um, coexist anymore doesn't mean that there's automatic beef have you ever had a friend that only talks about drama they're a good friend to you they never crossed you they y'all never had a beef or a fallout or anything but they live off drama and like that's the only thing that they talk about eventually especially we grown like it gets old, it gets tiring. Please save it. If that's all we have to talk about, if I can't call you and talk about making money, call you and ask you what's your goals, like if you give me your goals in one sentence and can't elaborate on it, but you have all this to say about uh, who, what somebody baby father did or who's still with who or she took him back or they on their second child. I just don't, I don't care to talk to you. Eventually, when somebody is on a path to finding themselves and their purpose in life, those type of conversations no longer hold weight. It's not fun to have those uh, type of conversations anymore. And it's really no shade behind it. And we could still, you know, say our hellos and goodbyes. But oh, that's cute. It, it, other than that, if you're not talking money, 
And you and then like I'm not gonna be like, oh, you know, like we don't have the same path, so I'm better than you. Absolutely not. I'm still trying to figure this life shit out. So no, I, I'm not I don't think, you know, I'm better than you. I just think our paths are no longer, you know, we're not on the same path. So, a few key takeaways, y'all. Keep your relationships private. Be Learn how to be a good friend. Just as you're expecting people to be, you know, loyal to you and a good friend of you, learn how to be a good friend. Deal with your emotions. Don't run away from them because that's just suppressing the hurt. That's not actually, you know, dealing with it. So deal with the hurt. Don't listen to all the horror stories about birth control. If that is what you want to do, you know, just do your research on it. And um, there are different forms of birth control if that if that's the route you want to take. And love yourself overall. Love yourself. You know, I'm going to take my hair down and then I'm going to show y'all everything all together i'm not getting dressed though so i know this is a get ready with me but this is a get ready with me facing hair because i ain't going nowhere i'm not about to put no clothes on <laughs>